Happy Resurrection Sunday. Come on, stand to your feet this morning. Are you ready to worship our King of Kings, our risen Savior this morning? Come on, let's give him our best praise. a moment when the lights went out when death had claimed its victory the king of love had given up his life the darkest day in history and there on a cross they made for sinners Every curse his blood atoned One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake And the veil was torn What sacrifice was made as the heavens roared. All hail King Jesus. All hail King Jesus. All hail the 
give him our best praise this morning. Thank you, Jesus. 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. It's the only thing that can wash us white as snow. And this morning, I, I feel like the Holy Spirit wants some people to be freed because you're trying in your own effort to get salvation. You're looking at your good works. You're looking at taking care of your family. You're looking at your own strength for salvation. It might not be for an eternal salvation, but whatever your situation is, we need salvation and we look to our own strength. And the problem is, is that's overwhelming. The problem is, is that we aren't enough. I know all the self-help podcasts and books and motivational speakers will tell you, you're enough, you're enough. The simple fact is we aren't, but we serve a God who is more than enough, amen? And I look at that cross and I think about what we're celebrating today, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and I'm both blown away and amazed by God's grace that he would make the sacrifice for me, but I also am so in reverence because it was my sin that put him there. It was our sin. And only the perfect blood of Jesus could have washed those sins away. And so today, you can take on a burden that is easy, a yoke that is light, because that's what Jesus promised us when we trust in him, when we put our faith in him. And stop relying on ourselves so much, but look to Jesus and the work that he has already done. Would you join me today in praying and just giving your thanksgiving and your gratitude to Jesus for what he's done. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much today that you chose. Lord, we know you asked if this cup can be taken, but not my will, but yours be done. And we're just so thankful, Jesus, that you chose to do the work to live the perfect life, to be the perfect sacrifice, to go to the cross, but then to rise on the third day to prove that you are God. And even today, God, we stand in expectation for your return. That the first time you came as Savior, but the next time you're coming, you're coming as the righteous judge to take us home to heaven for eternity where there'll be no more tears and no more pain and no more crying. And God, today, we hold on to the hope that we get to spend eternity in heaven with you, that we get to leave this earth that has pain and suffering and darkness, and we get to spend it in the light of eternity. We love you so much, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Can somebody give God some praise today? Come on. Come on. If you've been saved today from something, you got a praise inside of you. And I don't think it represents what you've been saved from. Man. Praise God. I don't think, some of us don't, we don't get it. We don't understand what we've been saved from. Man, when you get a hold of it, You'll be running up and down these aisles. We'll get Pentecostal real quick. But it wouldn't be church unless we had a little little face time. So turn around and greet some people around you. Get to know somebody new.
my goodness, you people really dressed up today. You guys look good. Well, welcome to Victory Church today as we celebrate our Lord and Savior and His resurrection. And man, isn't it good to be in the house? Some of you guys aren't sure yet, but I promise you're in for a treat today. This is our third service. We had one last night. We had this one this morning and now this one. And every one of them has just been so good. The presence of God, fellowshipping with other believers. Man, if you don't love this, I don't know what you're going to do in heaven. <laughs> you're going to be you're going to be in for a rude awakening. But if this is your first time here at Victory, we just want to say thank you so much for choosing Victory Church. You could have chosen a lot of places, but I don't know. I think you made a good choice. Does anybody else agree that you made a good choice? If it's your first time with us today, we've got a Guest Connect card in the seat right in front of you, and we'd love for you to fill that out. We have a Guest Connection table where we just like to meet you, get to know you a little bit better. If you have any questions or anything like that, that's a great place to go and ask. And we also want to give you the four-week challenge. Sometimes it's hard to gauge what a church is like in one week. And so we have the four-week challenge where we encourage you to come back four weeks in a row and check us out. We think that you'll find a place where you can grow in your relationship with God and with God's people. Amen. What do we say to all our first-time guests? We love it when you're here. Amen. Well, we're going to take our tithes and offerings today. And we just want to say thank you to everyone that faithfully gives to Victory Church. You're a huge part of helping us to bring heaven to earth. You're a huge part of being in the hands and feet of Jesus. And we just can't thank you enough. There's three ways to give on the screen. And if you're here as a guest today, we just want, don't want you to feel any obligation to give. We just want you to enjoy and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that you've chosen to use your people as instruments in the world today. And God, as we bring our tithes and offerings, we know that in our hands, it's only so much. But in your hands, God, you can do exceedingly abundantly more than we could ask or imagine. And so God, we hold on and we give this gift in expectation that we'll see a harvest of souls in heaven, that people would come to know you, that people would come to be delivered, that people would come to be healed in the name of Jesus. We love you so much today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. And here is our victory update. Good morning, Victory Church, and welcome to a special Easter edition of The Update. I'm Chris. And I'm Melissa. There is a lot happening around here, so let's go. First in The Update, Women's Conference 2024 is just days away. Ladies, join us on April 12th and 13th for a weekend with special guest, Pastor Nicole Moore, to experience a time of incredible teaching, worship, pampering, fellowship, and delicious food. Today is the last day to purchase your ticket for $65. Prices will increase tomorrow. Stop by the table in the foyer for more details or visit victorychurchgf.com. Next up, kids, it's your turn. Join us August 18th through August 21st for Vacation Bible School. Each night, Victory Church is excited to open its doors to kindergarten through sixth grade students for their own time of worship, games, crafts, snacks, and Bible lessons. The cost is free and the fun is guaranteed. Look for more information coming soon. Special events and conferences are not all we have going on here at Victory Church. Here are a few more great opportunities for those of you who want to get involved more regularly. Starting point membership classes will begin on April 7th during the 8.30 a.m. service. If you are interested in learning about Victory Church's mission, vision, and values, or in opportunities to serve here in the church, Join us for this four-week comprehensive class. See the table in the foyer to sign up today. 
Next up, small groups start back up on May 6th. More information will be coming out soon. Small groups are a great place to connect with fellow believers and grow in your personal relationship with God. With groups running all days of the week for women, men, and kids, there is something for everyone to enjoy. Last in the update, we'd like to take a moment to invite you back to church next Sunday. Our Sunday services run weekly at 8.30, 10, and 11.30 a.m., and we truly love it when you're here. We'll see you there. Okay, Victory Church, that's all we have for you this week. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Victory Church GF. And now, please help us welcome to the stage, Pastor Gary Hart. Come on, can we give God the praise today? Come on, somebody give God a good praise this morning in the house. We bless you. God, we exalt you. Lord, we magnify your name this morning. Yeah, come on. He's worthy. Worthy of our praise. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Man, you look awesome. Go ahead and take your seats. Welcome to Easter weekend 2024. We are so excited to have you in the house this morning. Uh, Let me ask a a really brave and bold question. How many of you would be willing to say, this is my very first time at a Victory Church service. I've never been to one before. This is my very first time. Awesome. Welcome. So good to have you with us here this morning. That's fantastic. We want to take this opportunity to look right into the camera and say welcome to all of you who are watching us by internet broadcast today. We are so delighted to have you on the journey with us. Come on, if you live in the Great Falls area, come on, get out from behind your computer screen and come join us here at 3001 13th Street South. Well, you'll be glad that you did. Amen. Well, before we uh, get into the Word of God, the message that God has for us, Here at Victory, our Victory family does what we call a confession of faith, just in preparing our hearts to receive the message that God has for us. So for the Victory family and those of you who want to participate, you brought your Bible, come on, let's hold our Bibles high. Repeat with me what's on the screen behind me. Say it with me. This is my Bible. It's true. I accept everything it has to offer me. I am what the Word says I am. I have what the Word says I have. And I can do what the word says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, As a grandpa drove into the driveway, he could see his four-year-old granddaughter, Julie, and a couple of her friends playing in the backyard. Approaching the girls, he said, who knows why we celebrate Easter every year? One friend chirped up first. Well, that's when you go sit on the big bunny rabbit's lap and tell him what you want in your Easter basket. The second girl answered, no, no, no. It's when you get a tree and you hang eggs on it, and when you wake up on Sunday, there's presents under it. Grandpa interrupted and gently said, those are good guesses, but Julie, do you know why we celebrate Easter? Julie nodded. It's when Jesus was crucified. He died, and his disciples put his body in the grave. And then on the third day, the stone was rolled away. Grandpa was so encouraged that Julie knew so many details. But then Julie continued. And then the entire town would come by the grave, and if Jesus came out and saw his shadow, they knew there'd be six more weeks of winter. (laughs) Amen. Uh, My great nephew, Colt, um, he is a very brilliant young man. He's four years old. Uh, The other day, he and his dad were having a conversation about Easter, and here's what Colt had to say. Died on the cross. Colt, what happened to Jesus? Jesus died on the cross, and he he was alive again. How did he come back to life? Yes. How? What happened to him? He Turn back on. He turned back on. <laughs> How about that, huh? He turned back on. Right in that only through the eyes of a child. I love that. He turned back on. Our theme for Easter this year is King Jesus. And for the beginning scripture of our message this morning, we're going to go to the very last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. And the book of Revelation is probably one of the most misunderstood books of the Bible. 
But in reality, it's one of the easiest to understand. For it tells us right at the very beginning what the book is all about. So let's read it together. Revelation chapter one, verse number one. Ready? The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant, John. So there it is. What is the book of Revelation about? It's about Jesus. Come on, it's the revelation of Christ, the revelation of Jesus that God gave him. So the book of Revelation is not about the Antichrist. It's not about the mark of the beast. It's not 666. It's not the seven bowls and the seven judgments. It's about Jesus. In fact, truth be told, the entire Bible is the revelation of Jesus. It's true. Every book of the Bible reveals something about him. Here, let me show you. In the next few minutes, I'm going to preach through the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And I'm going to show you that the entire Bible is really a revelation of Jesus. Are you ready? It's on the screen behind me and in between my ears. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. In Genesis, he's the seed of woman. In Exodus, he's the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he is our great high priest. In Numbers, he is the manna from heaven, the water from the rock, and the bronze servant on the pole whom we look to and are healed. In Deuteronomy, he's the prophet likened unto Moses. In Joshua, he's the captain of our salvation. And in Judges, he is our continual deliverer. In Ruth, he is our kinsman redeemer. In 1 Samuel, he's the anointed shepherd, the great giant slayer. And in 2 Samuel, he is the rock of our salvation. In 1 Kings, he is the grandeur of Solomon. And in 2 Kings, he is the likeness of Elijah. In 1 Chronicles, he is. In 1 Chronicles, he is. Don't tell me. In 1 Chronicles, he is the ruler of the tribe of Judah. And in 2 Chronicles, he is the eternal king of promise. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm on it now, okay? So here we go. In Ezra, he's the faithful scribe. In Nehemiah, he is the restorer of broken down walls. And in Esther, he is Mordecai, the great intercessor. In Job, he is the patient and faithful one, our living redeemer. In the book of Psalms, he is our shepherd and our strong tower, our strength and our song. In Proverbs, he's the wisdom of God. In Ecclesiastes, he's the third strand in the cord and the sole purpose and meaning of life. In the Song of Solomon, he is the lover of our souls. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> in Isaiah, he is the virgin's promised son. Emmanuel with us is God and our suffering servant who was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. In Jeremiah, he's the Lord, our righteousness. In Lamentations, he is the weeping prophet. In Ezekiel, he's the wonderful four-faced man revealed in the four gospels of the New Testament. In Daniel, he is the fourth man in the fire likened unto the Son of God. In Hosea, he is the faithful bridegroom, forever married to the backslider. And in Joel, he is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit and in fire. In Amos, he is the burden bearer. And in Obadiah, he is our mighty savior. In the book of Jonah, he is the great foreign evangelist three days in the belly of the great fish. In Micah, he is the one born in Bethlehem. In Nahum, he is our strength and our shield. In Habakkuk, he is the knowledge of the glory of the Lord that covers the earth even as the waters cover the sea. In Zephaniah, he is the restorer of God's lost, the, God's lost heritage, right? 
In Haggai, he is the desire of all nations. In Zechariah, he is the king riding in on the donkey and the pierced son of God. And in Malachi, he is the son of righteousness rising with healing in his wings. We got the Old Testament, here's the new. In Matthew, he is Messiah. In Mark, he is the miracle worker. In Luke, he is the son of man. And in John, he is the son of God, the word made flesh. He is the way, the truth, and the life. In the book of Acts, he is our ascended Lord and the only name whereby we must be saved. In Romans, he's the justifier of all mankind. In 1 Corinthians, he is the foundation upon which we build our lives. And in 2 Corinthians, he is the yes to all of God's promises. In the book of Galatians, he is the redeemer from the curse of the law. In Ephesians, he is the head of the church and the chief cornerstone of our faith. In the book of Philippians, he is the name that is above every name. And in the book of Colossians, he is the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form and the creator of all things. In the book of Thessalonians, he is the restorer of the wrath that is, or the rescuer from the wrath that is to come. And in 2 Thessalonians, he is the Lord, our peace and our encouragement. In Timothy, he is the only mediator between God and men. And in 2 Timothy, he is the judge of the living and the dead. In the book of Titus, he is our blessed hope, right? And in Philemon, he is the bond of relationships for all Christians. In the book of Hebrews, he is the author and the perfecter of our faith. In the book of James, he is our great physician. In the book of 1 Peter, he's our chief shepherd. In 2 Peter, he's our patient savior. In the book of Jude, John, 1 John, he's our advocate. In 2 John, he is the doctrine of God. In 3 God, in 3 John, he is the truth that we walk in. In Jude, he is the sure and faithful judge who is able to keep us from stumbling. And in the book of Revelation, he is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the one who was and is to come, the one, the living one who was dead, and behold, he is alive forevermore. He is the root and the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star. He is our soon coming, King of kings and Lord of lords. Can you say amen, somebody? Amen. Yeah. Praise God. That's my Jesus. And the Bible is all about Jesus. It's interesting to me that out of all of the descriptions of Jesus that we have in the Bible, that God decided to leave us with the picture of Jesus as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Why? Because he is king, and he has a kingdom. He is king, and he has a kingdom. But here's what you and I need to know. His kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. His kingdom is not of this world. When asked by Pontius Pilate if he was a king, Jesus answered in John 18, 36. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now, my kingdom is not from here. So if Jesus' kingdom is not an earthly kingdom, where is his kingdom? I'm glad you asked. Because the answer is, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. Jesus in John, or Luke chapter 17, verses 20 and 21 said, now when Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. Some would say it's in the heart of man. Not your physical heart, but your, the inner man of your spirit. This is where 
the reign and the rule of King Jesus takes place if you will let him. If you will let him. He comes to rule and reign in the hearts of men. One of the greatest Christian minds in history was a 17th century thinker named Blaise Pascal. I love that name, Blaise. If any of you ladies are thinking about naming your son, there's a great strong name, Blaise. I like it, right? And referring to the spiritual condition of mankind, he famously said, there is a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of each man which cannot be satisfied by any created thing, but only by God the creator made known through Jesus Christ. Let me say that again because I want want this to sink in. There is a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of each and every man which cannot be satisfied by any created thing, but only by God the creator made known through Jesus Christ. Most of you parents would probably recognize this. This is kind of one of those little pattern games that we give our little kids, and the idea is they take the pattern, they fit it into um, where it's supposed to go. And for our illustration this morning, since Jesus is the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world, we're going to let Jesus be the God-shaped vacuum in our heart. And only Jesus can fill that void that we have in our hearts. But here's what we often do so oftentimes, is we try to make other things fit in the hole, in the vacuum that only God can fill. And sometimes it's just a bunch of bull. (laughs) Right? I mean, I I know it's not a bull, but for our our purposes today, right? We we, we try to fill it with all kinds of stuff, with, with material things. We think if I just could buy that, if I could just have that, if I could just make more money, if I could just drive that car, if I could just have that boat for the lake, if I could just have something more, then maybe I'd be satisfied. The problem is more never satisfies. Once you get it, there's, there's always something else that you, I don't know about you, but every day I drive down the road and I go, ooh, I'd like that, <laughs> right? There's always something that's pulling on us because possessions, things never truly satisfy. For others, it's relationships. If I just found somebody, if I just found the right person, who could, could come into my life and complete me, then, then I'd be happy. Then, then I'd, I'd have everything that I need. The only problem is there's no earthly person who can complete you. Only God can complete you. And for you to expect them to complete you is unfair. As perfect and as wonderful as my wife is, She cannot complete me. And for me to expect her to complete me is to make her God. And that's totally unfair because she's not God. But then neither am I. And so what do we do? If the person we thought was going to complete us doesn't, we think maybe I married the wrong person. So now I need somebody else. I need to find someone else because they didn't complete me, so maybe they will complete me. But no one can complete you except God himself. And then we've got Jack. (laughs) Come on, you know where I'm going, right? Yeah, Jack. We do some dumb things in our life. Our obsessions, we try to fill the void with our addictions, with lust. 
We try to fill that void. Just one more picture, just one more video. It, that, that, but it never satisfies. It only creates a greater hunger for that which breaks the heart of God. It never satisfies. Drugs, alcohol, just one more hit, one more drink, one more bottle, one more weekend tied on, surely. And it never fills the void. Because there's only one who perfectly fills the vacuum, the void that you and I have in our life. And his name is Jesus. Today, I would like for you in the next few moments just to see that God-shaped vacuum in every heart as a throne. Because see, the kingdom of God is within you. There is a throne on every human heart. And the question is, who is on the throne of your heart? Now, you may be thinking this morning that I'm talking to people who don't have a relationship with Jesus. I am. But I'm also talking to every person in this room. Because I don't care how long you've been a Christian, how long you've put your faith in Christ, that doesn't mean that Jesus is on the throne of your heart. I know a lot of Christians who are ruled by fear, worried by, filled with anxiety and worry. Their lives are full of stuff. They're chasing after stuff, and that's what drives their life. Christians who are filled with obsessions and addictions, they're letting those things rule their life. Or maybe it's just you, yourself, your pride, your ego, refuses to surrender control of your life to a God who loved you enough to send his son to die for you. And in your heart, you think it's way below you to release control to anybody else. I've got to stay in control of my life. And so you dictate what goes on in your world. It might be your search for significance. If I could just get a higher title, if I could just make one more sale, if I could just, you know, if if people would just see the potential that's in me and it's driving you how many likes you can get on Facebook. You're you're scouring it every day, checking out your posts to see if anybody notices. Is anybody paying attention to me? And yet there's only one, my friends, only one that can truly satisfy, only one that can truly fill the void and has the rightful place to the throne of our hearts. And his name is King Jesus. King Jesus. And here's one of the things that often keeps people from surrendering to King Jesus is the lie that what I have to give up is somehow better than what I will receive in a relationship with Jesus. It's a lie. But the enemy screams that in our brains. What I have to give up is better than what I'll receive if I give my life to Christ. Have you ever seen that video of the young boy sitting across the table from the man? The man has a big old chocolate candy bar and a stash of cash. And he slides them across the table to the young boy and says, you can have either one you want. The boy does not recognize the value that's in the stash of cash. And so he reaches out and he grabs the chocolate bar, something far inferior to something far superior. And yet we do that all the time.
if, if I give my life to Christ, then that means I'd have to give up my Sunday morning to go to church. Let's just think about that, okay? So I give my life to Christ. I give up my Sunday morning for church. I go to heaven. Or I don't give my life to Christ. I keep my weekend and I go to hell. Hello? (laughs) What you're giving up doesn't even compare to what you gain. If I give my life to Christ, Jesus said I have to forgive the person who hurt me. Okay, let's think about this. All right, so I give my life to Christ. I forgive the person who hurt me. I walk free from bitterness and unforgiveness into a life of open love and acceptance and and I I get to live my life free. Or... I don't forgive my brother or sister. I hold on to my bitterness and I live my life in a continual prison of bitterness and unforgiveness. What I give up doesn't even compare to what I gain in a relationship with Christ. So here's what I'm saying today. Won't you let the king of glory come in? Won't you let the king of glory take his place on the throne of your heart? This is for every one of us today. In the book of Psalm chapter 24, verses 7 through 10, the scriptures read this. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory. The Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory. In Revelation chapter number 19, we're nearing the end of the story, ladies and gentlemen. And in verses 11 through 16, we read, Now I saw heaven opened, And behold, a white horse, and him who sat on it was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except he himself. He was clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, the hosts of heaven's armies, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The first time he came, he came as the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. The next time that he comes, he's coming as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And according to the scriptures, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The only question is, will you confess that he is Lord or will you confess that he is my Lord? The answer will determine where you spend eternity. Is he your Lord today? 
Is he the king of your heart? Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, O everlasting doors, that the king of glory might come in. This king, this king, he's standing at your heart's door today. Each and every one of you. There is not a person in this room that this scripture does not apply to. Even right now, he's standing at your heart's door and he's knocking. The question is, will you let him in? He will not force his way into your life. He must be welcomed in. We must open the door and allow him to come in. Will you open your heart's door today? Will you let King Jesus take his rightful place on the throne of your heart today? Nothing else can fill what only he can. And I promise you, there isn't one thing that he would ask you to give up that in a relationship with him, you wouldn't find something far greater. This is our King, King Jesus. He is the King of glory. Will you let him in today? Every head bowed, every eye closed all over this place. In just the next few moments, I'm gonna lead us in a prayer And I'm gonna invite every person to pray this prayer along with me because every one of us in our lives have at one time or another taken King Jesus off the throne of our hearts and put something else there. And today, he's knocking at our heart's door saying, won't you let me in? Won't you let me, King Jesus, take my rightful place on the throne of your heart. I'm the only one who can truly satisfy you. Will you let me in? So I'm gonna invite us to pray this prayer, but I want you to pray it with faith in your hearts. Open your heart today and let's welcome King Jesus to the throne of our heart. Pray with me, say, Heavenly Father, Thank you for loving me. Thank you for Jesus who came and died, shed his blood for my sin, and on the third day rose from the dead. I now boldly receive King Jesus as the Lord of my life. I'm giving my whole life to him. With your help, I'm gonna do my best to serve him and to obey him all the days of my life. Thank you, Father, that according to your word, I'm gonna have new life, eternal life, through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen and amen. Come on, can we give God a great praise this morning, somebody? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now listen. If you prayed that prayer with us today, we believe you got born again. You're now part of the family of God. We wanna encourage you to keep coming back week in, week out. Learn with us, grow with us, because God really does have more in store for you. And I just wanna declare to you that Easter is a great Sunday to begin a new habit of being in the house of God. Please don't be a creaster. Don't just come to church on Christmas and Easter, come on. Make it your habit to be in the house of God and begin to live the life God intends for you to live with Him on the throne of your heart. If you prayed that prayer with us for the very first time, we wanna, we've prepared some material. We wanna help you begin to live this new life in Christ. If you'll stop by the Connect Center out in the foyer and just tell them, I prayed that prayer with Pastor Gary. We've got, we'd like to put that material into your hands to help you begin to live this new life. And if you don't have a Bible, we wanna give you one today. We want you to go home with the Word of God. It's free of charge, we just wanna give it to you. We are so grateful that you were in the house today. How many of you are glad you came to Victory Church this morning? Are you glad? Yeah, come on.
Well, we have one more song we've got to sing, so you got to stand to your feet. Come on, we're going to declare it this morning. It's a song of our declaration. That's my king. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, he is the king of kings. Is he your king today? I wish I could tell you. Wish I could describe it. But I can't contain it. Can't keep it to myself. There aren't enough colors to paint the whole picture. Not enough words to ever say what I feel. Wonderful and beautiful and glorious and holy. He is merciful and powerful. Who are we talking about? That's my king. We declare the glory. Give him all the honor. All together worthy. Who are we talking about? That's my king. There's no one before you. Yes, we will adore you. All of this is for you. Who are we talking about? Joining the chorus There aren't enough notes to make the harmony It's the song of the angels Angels to the ages Angels It's all of the earth and heaven symphony yeah. Wonderful and beautiful and glorious and holy He is merciful